Hey there, welcome back. So um, with all the prep work we did whilst waiting for the engine, hopefully we can really crack on and do a few jobs today. Uh, we're gonna be installing the steering column here, uh, the fuel filler cap, uh, finishing off the fuel uh, plumbing uh, into the engine and anything else I can think of. So let's take a look. Now just briefly before we look at the steering column, I've gotta say one of the most difficult jobs I've done, and I don't mean frustrating like many of the jobs, but most difficult jobs is actually peeling off the film, the protective layer off of this uh, stainless steel. It's a real sod, uh, to put it politely, and uh, really difficult if you can't get a hand in there and uh, get good access and you're trying to pull it with your fingertips, which just does not work. It tears at the most awkward place and then you're just trying to get an edge again. I've got to say, personally, I definitely would peel all of this off before putting the body on the car next time. I think uh, it's it's too difficult. The access uh, in, in here is too difficult. You're leaving little tears that uh, are, are not particularly pretty. Um, you're getting your hand caught and torn up uh, uh, up underneath here, trying to peel it all off. And uh, it's, it's, it's not great at all. So uh, I would definitely uh, peel it off and maybe just uh, mask up some easy um, masking, uh, removable masking tape uh, in any areas that you think might scratch. So, for example, I will be peeling off all of this side. However, just before putting the uh, the headers on, I will just uh, put a little bit of easier to remove masking tape that you can get a finger behind and it pulls off in one easy go. Not like this horrible, stretchy, uh, sticky stuff. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's what I would do. Uh, it's up to you if you did the same. Right, let's go. Rightio, so uh, the first thing I've noticed is that AK have not made the holes for the steering wheel uh, kind of bracket, if you like, uh, which uh, goes here. This is what it looks like. Uh, I think that's because this needs to be very slightly um, set in place so that the steering column isn't rubbing against uh, against uh, the edge of the holes. So we're going to uh, mount the steering column and poke uh, this extension through the hole and then slide this uh, over it and uh, get, get it so the column is not rubbing against, uh, against the holes and then mark uh, where I need to drill. And it's just held in place by a couple of uh, M5, I guess, uh, hex uh, nuts, uh, bolts. So. Um, so we're going to have a look at that. Uh, also in here is this nylon kind of washer. Uh, this can be a real sod to get on and off. And hopefully I'll video myself resting with that. Um, but basically you need to uh, take it out of here. And uh, you need to slide it on. And make sure you've got it in the right orientation because it is shaped. And you need to get it on over here. It's dead hard. Um, so I normally try and... Uh, start off here and get a really wide edged screwdriver just to prise it apart a bit so you can get it on and then it's fairly easy just to push on up to this section all right so uh this should the steering column should mount fairly easy because uh it's been in there before but let's hope it's got good access past the pedal box so let's take a look underneath okay so i must apologize for this video you're probably not going to see much more than my head uh, and uh, you might have guessed I'm no videographer. It's also surprisingly difficult to do things with a bit, without a bit of music in the background. Uh, but I can't do that because of copyright reasons. So we're going to just do our best here to show you what it's like in the real world. So all I need to do here is uh, take the weight off, really. I'm not even... Maybe going to concentrate on uh, on the right amount of washers and stuff right now until we got some weights taken off, and then um, and then uh, and then we can uh, concentrate on a bit of leveling and and stuff. So this is basically just mounting it all up. Good there. Good, so I can relax a little now. 
that next one through. I don't know what the best idea is, whether we need uh, the bolts at the, uh, the nuts at the top or bottom. I should think at the bottom. We'll always be able to slide some sort of spanner into the top to stop it spinning and be able to get the ratchet on underneath. All right, so that's essentially in. So I'm just going to work on uh, leveling this up and straightening it up. So it's uh, we're going to get a straight steering wheel. And then I'll show you uh, what we're doing with the, uh, the bit inside the engine bay. All right, so there's the steering column all buttoned up. Uh, nice and straight. I'm quite impressed with that. Change everything to nylocks. Got uh, got the nice uh, washers and everything on there. Um, so we are all set. It's all rock solid and uh, not going to move. So now we turn our attention to uh, this little boss here. So to get this on, I just uh, make sure I got it in the right orientation with the slightest bit uh, going towards the firewall. Obviously, I've just taken slid this out of the uh, steering column. Got a large blade screwdriver. Just prise it apart, get it on there, and then uh, I'm not really sure what to do next, other than maybe lean against a nice flat edge. I hope I don't slide off uh, too bad. Oop. <laughs> There we go, and now we're, now we're on. So that's good, so that all slides uh, slides fairly nicely. Uh, so then we get our uh, other end on. Now I have had, yeah. So uh, this is just gonna need a, just a touch of filing um, just to be able to slide this on uh, over that wide section, just, just a smidge. And I remember having to do that before. So let me just file that out very slightly without ruining all the nice uh, nice edge in there. And then we can slide that on. All right, so here we go uh, with the uh, steering rack extension, etc. And I'll try and explain what I'm attempting to achieve. So I've got this uh, extension uh, kind of loosely bolted in, in place. And what we've got to do is miss the uh, knuckle here on the um, upper uh, uh, wishbone and miss the heater pipes that come out of here, giving them enough room for the old uh, 16 mil um, silicon pipe to go on. So we do have some movement here, which is why they don't pre-drill the holes for this uh, little bracket. Uh, it, it goes up, up and down quite a bit, uh, and it gives you, you know, another four or five mil, and there's a little bit of movement uh, this way as well. So what I'm thinking is um, I need to do sort of maximum that way to miss the knuckle, um, and kind of high as pos, but I'm just going to, I'm going to just drop it down then just by a mill, just so it's not rubbing on anything. So up to the top, kind of over, over to this side a bit more. And then I'm just going to drop it down ever so slightly and mark, um, and mark my holes with all this kind of in, in place. Um, now this was a little bit tight, this nylon uh, bushing, uh, so well advised by AK. Um, I thought this was just a real thin layer of hammerite on here, um, but it is, you know, uh, a stickier kind of paint, not sticky to the touch, but you know, when you've got fittings on there and it was restricting the movement. So um, uh, well advised, I just, uh, uh, filed that uh, paint off, made it all nice and shiny, and this rotates uh, lovely now, and um, and uh, and the bush can go on, and it all rotates really nicely. So uh, I'm just going to uh, use a couple of my two hands to uh, to mark up the holes, um, buzz buzz the holes through, and then we got the pain of fitting. Now that is a pain. Bottom one's fine. This top one. Let's see if I can show you that. Uh, so the top one will be coming out above above the column there. So, you know, you can just about get get, get your nut on there. I usually um, get a bit of um, blue tack with the nut on the end of the, my finger and kind of hold it over the uh, the bolt while someone else just, uh, just does the bolt up and, you know, a couple of threads get on. And then you can get in there and hold it with a spanner or, uh, you know, extension, smaller. Uh, small socket or something. So that's what we're doing next.
Uh, so there we go, really successful there. Just need to wait for a, a volunteer to help me uh, do up these uh, bolts there uh, whilst I reach inside to draw that plate face, uh, flat to the, uh, to the stainless steel. I've uh, got a really nice angle and excellent clearance. So um, it's hard to show, but uh, you know, any clearance is good. If it's missing, it's missing. Uh, and here I have uh, plenty of clearance for my pipes just to come out of there and then return back underneath. Uh, for when I come to do the heating. So we have uh, successfully done the steering column there. Uh, now onto the fuel line plumbing. Now I have already started this um, because I just got a bit carried away. Now I was all set to have the fuel filter um, set uh, basically up, up here, uh, which is what AK do now, I believe. Now that would have been really handy, easily uh, accessible, you know, undo both ends or, or, or just crack it open in the middle and uh, and uh, remove any, any debris, etc. However, um, I can't do that because I've got some uh, covers that, that, that are going over the engine and they impacted this space. So instead, I fitted it down here. Uh, still really nicely accessible actually, um, you know, a little bit awkward to, to undo, but uh, much better than being underneath the car and you're going to lose a lot less fuel as well because it's higher than the petrol uh, tank and uh, you don't have to worry too quickly about uh, having to plug the ends etc. And um, uh, all I've done basically is dismounted uh, the, this, uh, the, the spring uh, clamp here and um, and then I've teed off here to go to the fuel rail and the other line goes up along to the uh, fuel pressure and then the return is uh, the return drops down uh, back down to the fuel tank. Now I was getting a little frustrated and I come to realize that I've got two different size uh, hose finishing ends so they were really hard to get on and then they were restricting me pushing them onto all the all the barbs so uh so i've stopped where i am and i'm going to uh order the correct ones well i did order the cor uh, correct ones in the first place but they're from a different manufacturer who obviously have different tolerances anyway uh once i've got them back uh i'm gonna have to re i'm gonna trim this hose to be a bit shorter because i just want this following the line uh, down along here nicely and you can see it uh, buckles there so it's a touch too long so I'll just be able to shorten that and uh, and just tidy things up and I'll also uh, just shorten this hose as well so it actually just brings it away here I think if this was a bit shorter it would just uh, come uh, come away and, uh, and and it wouldn't actually hit the sides straight into the quick release fitting that we have on the fuel rail, which is really nice touch. Okay, so um, that's all good. And now we're going to look at something else. So uh, whilst I wait for some parts, just to tidy up that fuel line uh, in the engine bay, we're just gonna move on to the filler pipe here. Well, we'd already made the hole, so it's just a case of uh, cutting some fuel filler pipe, 51 mil from Car Builder Solutions and uh, threading that in there. Uh, typically, I am short of some Michelin clamps, uh, so I need to get uh, another one here and one for the inside, but um, that's a pretty nice fall. It's all uh, at a slight angle, not that it matters much by the time you've been around one corner. Now, uh, what we need to finish up is the breather pipe. So uh, just coming from here, and it doesn't matter about rise, fall or anything, it just needs to get through here into the breather pipe of the fuel tank. Uh, so no problem there. I'm hoping I've got some spare uh, braided hose and I'm just going to use that. So I'll have a scout around. Otherwise, we'll finish it up on, a, on another video. Okay, so typically I do not have any braided hose left over, so I'm going to have to order another, I don't know, meter. Um, but this time I'm going to use a proper uh, grommet um, because the smaller the grommet, the, um, the more difficult uh, and, and less pliable they are. So I'm gonna use this grommet and we're gonna come in just fairly close, I think, to the, uh, to the fuel filler. And that's just, just gonna come through and curve down into the, um, into the breather pipe. So we're all done here. 
Okay then, so we're nearly at the end of the video. Uh, just before we do, I'm just gonna check how our gas ram brackets are fitting. So you can see uh, here, I've just put this one in into place and it's all good. Uh, the flat part of it is perfect and that it's just running under this valley here. So we can drill down and do the uh, strengthening bolts straight through the flat underneath. Um, but I think this stud is a bit too long. The actual gas ram itself is just gonna be sitting in here uh, with the nut on as well. Uh, so I think we need to just tidy this up. Uh, I'm not worried about any impact really from the header tank or anything moving, but um, I think it looks unsightly just hanging out. So I'm just gonna just temporarily uh, put a, a gas ram in place and see where uh, how, how far away the nut would be and then uh, and then cut it through. So that's all good. You can see that I had to put a little bit of a, a, a padding, if you like, uh, behind this bracket just to bring it out to the correct position. So I found a nice bit of alley uh, and I think that just suits it all fine. So that just bolts straight through. And of course, I'll uh, check the other side as well, just to make sure that's all fine. You can see there's a difference in height in the kit that uh, this one is, uh, you know, about about an inch or so. And that definitely looks definitely looks higher over there. But um, but when it's all together and everything's in place, it'll look fantastic. All right. So I'm just going to tidy that up and I think we'll call it a day with this video. So thanks for joining me again for this video. Uh, we're tantalizingly close to doing the wiring, but I think before that, I really need to just tidy up and finish up uh, a few of these jobs that are just uh, hanging around. And that's mainly because I'm just waiting for a few deliveries of clips, etc. So on the next video, uh, I want to f be fitting the air vents that uh, direct air onto the windscreen because I haven't cut those out yet or fitted the little metal surrounds. And then we're going to do the heater plumbing as well with the brackets that go underneath the car and tidy up a few of the jobs and show you the uh, braided hoses that I've had made up for the both ends of the clutch etc. Test that our uh, rear lights still fit in after, after uh, the body's been fitted and uh, then hopefully we'll get on some wiring with the video after that. So I'll see you again.